Hi, everyone. Welcome to Beacons of Balance. I'm Arlene. This is my beautiful co-host, Joanne. And down below, <laughs> you'll see Dawn. Dawn Silver, who's our wonderful guest speaker that we'll be introducing shortly. Again, welcome to Beacons of Balance. If it's your first time here, thank you so much. What Beacons of Balance is, this world is a world of duality. It's up, down, black, white, left, right. It's going to be that way forever. And we're here to try to bring balance into our lives because when we're like this, that's when it totally goes chaotic. And it's yeah. also seeing your darkness, honoring your light and making your choices because that's what it's all about to get here. So we're bringing to you, because it's about you, wonderful speakers that are going to share their wisdom and thoughts on what they do. So, Joanne, tell us yes. about Dawn. You've known well, her a while. Thank you, Arlene. And um, thank you again, Dawn, for, I know how busy you are, girl. Oh, wow. Um, I've known Dawn, I'm, I'm going to guess, probably about 20 years, at least. Oh, no longer. At least 30 years in <laughs> Illinois. And I'm telling you, people, this, we have a special person here. Dawn is considered like, in my book, she is the best of the best of the best. We don't get junk, do we, Arlene? No. <laughs> and you have a career that spans um, almost 50 years. Like you started in astrology like in 1977. Wow. But there's so much more to you. You're a Mariel practitioner. You're a doctor of napropathy. That's impressive in itself. Yeah, uh, I didn't know that. Yeah. What? Oh. Hey, stick with us, right? Well, you'll learn a lot about this girl. She's the wow. author of an amazing book, Jewels of the Lotus, Tibetan Gemstone Oracle. But if that wasn't enough, Dawn ran the coolest store. And you could appreciate this, Arlene, because you know what goes into running a oh, store. Yeah. But this Healing Earth Resources, I think it was on Ashland Avenue, Dawn. Uh, I remember going in there. It was like you know, a kid in a candy shop. And then not to mention all the countless workshop that uh, Dawn offers. Um, you even have, you've been on like five times on the sea crew, the sea angel cruises. Huh. And I believe that was run by Tina Michelle, if I'm not mistaken. You know, uh, yeah, that was a, that's a pretty cool thing to do. You've been on countless radio shows, TVs, podcasts, magazine articles. And not to mention, you're a, a master at crystals. You've studied under the best of the best of the best. So, I mean, we definitely need you back here because yeah, I can't not, yeah. cover these all. This could be a three-hour show. <laughs> exactly. So we're just thrilled. Arlene and I are thrilled that you're with yes. us. Yes. Thank so, you. Yeah. So, Dawn, again, welcome. Welcome to the show. So happy to have you. And I didn't even know you were Marielle. That was the very first thing I ever did was Marielle. And she's in spirit now. I know. And she, she was, was amazing. She was amazing. Yeah. She was a brilliant woman. But she was wonder. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, okay, so that's another thing. I didn't know. So fill us in on how you actually, what got you in an interest in astrology, because you have so many facets, and especially yeah. being a doctor also. I mean, that's pretty cool. Thank, thank you. I'm not in practice anymore, just so you know, the astrology took my life and took away my life. But it's beautiful because, you know, we're living through a time and, you know, my my business actually like tripled during COVID because everybody was mm -hmm. needing to create a new occupation or when do I get my shots? I'm a teacher. I don't want to get sick. So I went through so much of that and still mm -hmm. because people are still going through stuff. It's the way of the world, you know, and I'm just kind of going off track. But it's like every hundred or so years we get a nasty pandemic. And why would we think that we're immune from it when we've, you know, destroyed some of the agriculture and stuff yeah. like that, the way we farm things? And so, I mean, these things happen and none of us should be so arrogant to think that just because we're spiritual beings, you know, with a higher light, you know, that uh, it's going to skip over us. But that's part of the journey. So I call my journey the the uh, journey of synchronicity. It seems like every time you go somewhere, another door opens up, but it's relevant to doors that are going to open up 20, 30 years from now. So I started in astrology because before that I was having, I'm sure like both of you, mystical experiences in your teenage years, you know, out-of-body experiences when I was reading books on hypnosis. But I had a boyfriend that tried to turn me on to astrology, and I thought, you know, no way. My dad's a physics teacher. I ain't going for this stuff at all. Because in those days when you'd read up on it, it was it was kind of frou-frou what was out there. Do you remember Sidney Omar in the paper? 
Sydney Omar. No. He, but just he was a brilliant astrologer years ago. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Column in the paper, and he said every day he would say, this is going to happen to you. And I thought, but I was like 17, and me and my friends wanted to put our money together and go get a house, you know, and stuff like that. I was a waitress, and so I made money when nobody else was making money. Make money waitressing. Cindy Omar literally put in the paper that day, don't buy a house with your friends. You might want to, but in two weeks, you're going to change your mind. And I did. <laughs> and it was, I was like, how could he know that? But I'm a Virgo with a Virgo rising and a Gemini moon, and they're both, all three, ruled by Mercury. So I figured out when he was writing, he was writing for somebody who had a predominance of that energy in their chart. And so I started to notice the synchronicity. I was 17. I went traveling for seven years or several years, slept on the beaches of Greece, and I would open my astrology books. And that's another story in itself because the area, the area I spent the most time in on the south of Crete was right next to these caves. And I know, yeah. And I was just starting to get into healing, you know, peppermint tea, wow, chamomile tea, wow, I can eat yogurt, you know. But remember in those days, this wasn't prevalent here in the United States. It yeah. was bigger there in Europe. It was way different. So anyways, a year later, Chiron was discovered and he was near Mount Pelion sleeping in the caves doing his work. And it's a long story because Chiron is big in my astrology chart and it uh, sets off my journey of healing. So I came back home. So I was reading the books, read the Iliad, the Odyssey, all that stuff. I came back home and got a job as a waitress and had my charts with me. And I said to one of the waitresses, oh, you know, I want to go find a good astrology class to go to. And she goes, well, there's this woman who comes in and sits at the piano bar every Thursday or Friday night, and her name is Helen Blue. And I said, really? And so Helen was in. I just happened to have my stuff, showed her my stuff, and she read the chart like right on the spot. And she said, well, this one should be in jail. This one's going to be a doctor, you know, and she was right on all of them. Oh, I know. But she looked at me and said, you could study with me. So I started studying with her. And a couple of years into it, and I had never gone to college or anything. I don't know why the area of Chicago I was raised in, you know, there were a lot of gangs and, and, and some druggies and stuff like that. So I wasn't amongst the best people. And so she told me I was going to go back to school and I thought she was nuts. <laughs> and the time came along and it was like a natural progression. I felt like going back to school and she told me a year later you need to become a napropath, go sign up for the class. And I'm thinking, what the hell's a napropath? And I went to, <laughs> and it was brilliant, but this is part of the synchronicity. So I became a napropath, had a fabulous business for years, but I wanted to have babies. We know what it's like to be family oriented, wanted to have my babies. And you can't just put the babies in the corner and go back to work. We know that that doesn't work too well, you know, until they start getting older. And so I was, I opened up a store at that point. And that's what I did for 19 and a half years, which is a nodal cycle in astrology. And when I knew I was going back, that I was going to have to go out of business because, you know, the world is hard to have a retail store. Yeah. I'm sure you know that, Arlene. Yeah. I started doing the astrology like I used to do. In the meantime, when I was grow, you know, when I was a waitress and all that, I would do charts for everybody. Ten dollar charts, you know, take you out, let's go have a bite to eat and I'll do your chart kind of thing. And so it kind of grew like that. But in becoming a napperpath first and having a metaphysical bookstore and an organic juice bar and cafe and, you know, selling all these health products, I became I don't want to say a medical astrologer. I call myself a nutritional astrologer, but in the ancient days, which I studied the temperaments and, and you know, the body conditions back in the, uh, you know, 300 AD all the, or 100 AD, there was a famous uh, doctor named Galen who was an astrologer and he did the temperaments. So you can look at a person's chart and see what they're likely to experience physically in their life, what foods they should eat, all of the above. It was my astrologer, who I always wondered why she didn't tell me to become an astrologer. She told me to become a napropath, <laughs> who got me the training on healing in the body and then, you know, going into Mariel and everything, which made my astrology all the more relevant. 
Does that make sense? That makes sense. Yes. What, what a beautiful journey. Beautiful yeah. journey. Nothing's wasted, no matter who we are. Nothing's wasted. There's a reason why we go this path or that path. Exactly. So, Dawn, but, you know, there's so much happening now in the world. And just yeah. here in the United States, I've noticed an increase of tornadoes everywhere. I mean, we've had 30 tornadoes in Illinois alone, and it's I not know. even summer. And then everything that's happening... Oh my God, those Oklahomans and Texas, bless their hearts. You know, what is going on astrology wise with that? Well, I'm not really good at doing the weather, but I do know that when Mercury changes signs, the weather changes, but Mercury is with the planet Uranus right now. And okay. Uranus is expect the unexpected, and it's in the sign of Taurus, so it's going to affect tor terra firma. So Mercury changes, the weather changes. In two days, it's going to be past this aspect. And I'm hoping it's going to even out for a little bit, but it's then rough. Mercury goes to the side of Gemini, and Gemini is winds. So oh, oh no! <laughs> we'll, we'll see. I, I know it doesn't stop, but wait, there's more. <laughs> no. You know, the skies are always changing patterns, but there are really important markers that make a difference. I remember, I don't know if I did the lecture for you, but I did it for someone, and I, a year, not a year, I think it was a half a year before J. January 6th, I picked that date and I said, I don't know what's going to happen, but it looks really nasty and I can see fires and I can see, you know, violence and stuff like that. I didn't do that by being psychic. I mean, there is a branch of astrology called mundane astrology. So I like to dabble in it. I wish I had time. I mean, I have a reality. I have to make a living like the rest, like many. Well, and the mundane astrology just focuses on countries, the world, the aspects, how things are changing, but also the history. Like what happened, like we're going through a tremendous period coming up in the next year, which will last more than several years. And some of it's going to be very amazing in the time, in the, you know, as far as potential space travel, but also healing, it's going to be profound. You can see the AI coming on the scene. I mean, the, you know, if you think about 1991, 92, the yeah. whole world sh shifted at that time. And that was the time that Uranus and Neptune were together for the first time in 171 years. And it rules the way we relate and communicate with each other. And what happened is the internet came on. And then 171 years earlier, it was the railroad. So we start seeing people on each coast. It was a reality in different you know, throughout the world, wherever you live. So hmm. it's interesting. So I'll just, if I can share, I know I talk a lot. <laughs> no, share, please. That's why I'm here. So Didn't... back in 570 BCE, we had the planet Uranus conjunct, and conjunct means right with at the same degree, conjunct the planet Neptune, conjunct the planet Pluto, which the next time this is going to happen in our world is going to be about uh, 3,500, give or take some years. But the point is, at that time, the Jewish Bible was written, Lao Tzu, Confucius were on the scene, Socrates was on the scene, Sappho, the, go uh, the goddess from Greece who taught everybody to love everybody equally. You know, it's it's but, not about, you know, anyways, that's a sexual thing too, but it is that. The Jewish Bible was written, Buddha was born, all these magnificent things on the planet happened because you had these aspects in such a way that set up the conditions. Now, we don't have, obviously, the conjunction coming on again, but for the first time in a while, we're going to have three outer planets, Pluto, Neptune, and Uranus, in a harmonious aspect, which means that two of them are making the harmonious 120-degree trine, and the other two together are making the 60-degree sextile. And that is just opening up the world for so many possibilities, new discoveries, new ways of being. And our world is going to shift in a bigger way. And we're at the we're at the beginning of it shifting because they're starting to come into aspect with each other in the latter degrees. But now they're going in latter degrees of certain signs like 28 Taurus, 29 Capricorn, and 28 Pisces. But now... They're going into brand new signs, like Pluto is going into the sign of Aquarius to stay. It's been flirting with back and forth for the first time in 248 years. Uranus is going into Gemini for the first time in 84 years. 
and Neptune's going into Aries for the first time in 165 years. And as they make this passage, they're in a beautiful harmony. And it's going to open up the ability for people to think differently, for new occupations, new ways of being. You know, but it's always scary when you're at the last degree because you get that hold that you want to hold on tight to things. So I know that people are worried about AI, and for sure we should be, you know, because the world is changing in ways that are not, we're not comfortable with. But the new people being born or the young ones are going to be comfortable with this type. I mean, this is their generation. It's not ours anymore. So we're at the sure. beginning of the change. And how long are you saying that this change will be? I think it's most probably... Yeah, it's prevalent now, but it's most prevalent 25, 26, 27, 28. So you're looking, this is like good days are coming. <laughs> well, good you want to say good days are coming, but it doesn't mean that everybody, you know, everything is relative to the actors involved. Yeah. Like you got people like Putin, you know, he's not a good actor. Yeah, and yeah. I, I won't mention any more because I know you probably don't want to delve into the political scene, but... Yeah. Uh, I got it. But the the bad actors are not going to all of a sudden turn out to be good actors. So, well, it's going to take time and change is difficult for people. Exactly. No one likes but change. The, but change is, but change change is, is living. Coming. Yeah. Change I, is, I, is life. Change is life. If we don't change, we stagnate and die. Exactly. Right. You know, well, Don. That's the interesting thing. I'll just make one quick point Pluto sure. is at the end cycle in Capricorn. And the United States was born with Pluto in Capricorn. And so we just had our Pluto return a few years back. But it's at the end degree of Capricorn, and it's ready to change. But Pluto rules the revolution. It rules uh, transformation, transcendence, all these things. And in the sign of Capricorn, or Pluto also rules banks, and it, in the sign of Capricorn, it's very corporate. Going into Aquarius, it's about brotherhood and equality and the common person. So the whole paradigm shift is changing in ways that are going to be amazing. But whenever you have the shift about to occur, the old goats try to hang on to what they can. Yeah. And so it's we're, it's an interesting time in space. <laughs> so, You know, Dawn, you made a, a really, I love following you on Facebook. You have the most beautiful graphics and you always oh, explain what the current moon is. And we're in a flower moon, which I thought was so beautiful the way you described it. Yeah. You know, it's a time that everything's blooming and that, that's from the Native Americans. But there was a really interesting part of this article that you wrote. And you said, the closest aspect in the heavenly skies in the sextile between Jupiter in Taurus and Neptune in Pisces. And you said they're very compatible working together. And that caught my eye because Arlene is a Taurus and huh? I'm a Pisces. So well, like you, cer you certainly are. And you're born on my astrologer's birthday, by the way, who I considered my spiritual mommy. And you look like a beautiful Taurus. I love <laughs> Taurus can wear the color peach so well. And you look yes, so good at it. But oh, you've got that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Of course, because it's bringing together the spirituality. You know, the Jupiter, the uh, Neptune, Jupiter <clears throat> energies coming together are beautiful. It's it's mm -hmm. even not just cosmic consciousness and wanting to see people evolve, but it's very spiritual and saintly, too. It's like, how can we heal the world? And Pisces rules immigrants. So it's an interesting thing. Oh, wow. I'm not saying there shouldn't be. I'm not even going there. But but it's it's our attitude towards what we think are immigrants, migrants, asylum seekers, people like that. It's just really about opening up your heart to compassion and seeing the light in a person, you know, even in a difficult situation, you just change their clothes. I remember there was an experiment on, on uh, Facebook somewhere where it showed the kids of the migrants who were crossing the border, if you change their clothes into the clothes of the kids we know and just clean them up a little because they didn't make the, you know, couple thousand mile journey, oh. they look just like us. You know, oh, they look just <laughs> like the kids we love. So we sure. have to love everybody. You know, everybody has a journey. So, yeah, but so it is. It was interesting. I thought, you know, the energy this last couple weeks was really special. There was, this was really special. And even today, Venus is exactly conjunct Jupiter. And that's an aspect of artists. It's also, it's in the sign of Gemini. So it could be 
you know, through media. And it was interesting because uh, in your chart, Joanne, I grabbed your chart and I didn't have yours, Arlene. Okay. I just want to say in your chart, you have the North Node in the sign of Aries, 27 degrees, and it's where you go to grow. The North Node is your greatest growth and evolution in the astrology chart. And okay. fulfillment, the South Node is where you've been. It doesn't mean you shuck the South Node and you don't, you know, enjoy your gifts, your South Node's in Libra. So it's, you know, marriage and love and you know, compromising, being in partnerships. But your greatest growth is to still be in the, those partnerships, but as your own person, to not lose yourself. Wow. And it exactly sextiles Uranus in Gemini in your chart, which is in the fifth house of creative talents. The North Node's on the third house of broadcasting. But Uranus rules TV and Gemini rules podcasts. Huh? So I looked at it this morning <laughs> and I said, she's going to grow. We're going to have oh, a wow. TV show, Arlene. Yeah, yeah, we're go we're going. Can you but tell quick? Can you if what do you need from me? Can you tell quickly? Like we just want to see what this is going to work out with both of us together. Yeah, I'm going to have to look on the side because I have to input all your info. Oh, okay, all right. I can't get on the show right now. It, yeah, but yeah. when's your birthday in general, if you don't mind? Uh, April, you, April, sure. April. I don't care. April twenty fourth, nineteen fifty. Although I deny it. <laughs> I love it. Arlene's uh, son is in her third house. I know. Sun in the third house is fabulous. It's because fabulous. The communication. House communications and broadcasting and all that. Uh, and your son is in early Taurus. So, you know, obviously I could see you went through some big changes over the years. <laughs> particularly, <laughs> particularly around six, seven years Think ago. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes it feels like the rug's being pulled out from you when you go oh, yeah. through the changes. But if that rug wasn't pulled out from you, and especially being a Taurus, which is a fixed sign, you would hang on and you'd be least likely uh, to change. So somebody helped make these changes for you and pulled the rug out in some way. And that yeah. allowed you to go where your soul actually wanted to go in the first place, which yeah. is which is the wild thing. So your North Node's in Aries also, um, I think. Let me just think for a second. March, you're born a year later. Yeah, your North Node is in the sign of Aries also, which means... Oh, wow. And I don't I don't know where it is in your chart, but it just means for both of you, you're here to learn to be pioneers and to be brave and to That's our. to scale new height. I mean, that is what you're here to do. Yeah. We were on that wagon train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, so we, my south node, where I've been before, is in the sign of Gemini, and it's at the top of my chart, which is business. When I woke up this lifetime, doing business was like, like drinking a glass of water. It was nothing for me. It was so easy. But my greatest growth to grow is to sit in my garden. And this is what I do. Like Joanne, I garden a lot. You love yeah, gardening. Yeah. And it is my... Yeah, and I love flowers. Eat them. Yeah, flowers. I love flowers. Yeah, fingers flowers. in the dirt. Yeah. So, but it's in the sign of Sag, which is study your philosophy. Sit at the feet of masters. Don't be such a skeptic. Let it go. You know, so that's a challenge because I came from a father who is a physics teacher who used to tell me I was, you know, <laughs> kind of like a dum dum for everything I believed in. He called me a con artist actually once. Mm. Oh my God. But he was, was a good part. He was actually a good person, but sometimes good people don't realize the words they use can hurt too. Oh, that was a generation period. Yeah. I think that we all grew up and it was like a common thing. Yeah. My dad was an atheist from Brooklyn, New York. You know. Uh -huh. He was raised in school, you know. <laughs> but on the other hand, he brought the other good values in with it. You know, so my whole life I always shared and I was always happy to. And through all my journeys, I make great people. You know, somebody got their backpack stolen. I'd share my lunch, whatever it was. <laughs> it's, it's part of the journey of how people open up to you and you open up to people. Yes. It's great. Yes. I my told dad you. always said, you don't want to be an artist. He said, you'll starve. I so, it was my dad's truth. So imagine yeah. if I held out of his truth, I would have missed yeah, out. Yeah, because you're fabulous. You really, your artwork is so timelessly gorgeous. And my well, father, I do remember, my father said, I've forgotten more than you'll ever know. <laughs> I had, And you're a little kid, it's and I'm thinking, I'm thinking about them going, wait a minute. Yeah. It's, 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 I, couldn't, I couldn't say anything. It, yeah. you, just it just, swallow, you swallow that. I just want to add that six months before my dad passed away, he had his first out-of-body experience and called me to it immediately oh, wow. and was not afraid. And he 
I had some Gemini in his chart. Gemini is like a motor mouth, and I have plenty in Gemini. And he comes through all the time. He loves to come through. It's like, it's exciting for him. Yeah. The Isn't that great? Because yeah. it's yeah. not, we think, you know, the other side is out there and it's it's right with us and they stay with huh. us continually. You know, we go no other side. It. It's just, they're in a higher vibration. That's they're all. in a higher vibration. They're still continue to be with us. And we okay. don't realize that. Can you, um, you know, I know we're, the time is going along here, but can you just for our listeners and uh, viewers just go quickly, because some people don't know about, uh, and just a quick snippet of Mercury retrograde, what it is, because you, the term is thrown out there, and I think a lot of people don't even know what it is. And yeah, uh, that's a great quick, one. A quick, just a quickie on it. Well, and, that's what everybody knows. Now, all the planets go retrograde except the sun and moon, which are luminaries. But Mercury goes retrograde three and a half times a year, usually for three to three and a half weeks at a time. And so what it is, is actually our our Earth's, uh, the Earth speeds up on its elliptical path, which makes it look like Mercury is going backwards. It's like two trains going forward, but one goes faster. And so when Mercury, which rules communications and the weather and, and lots of things like that, uh, you know, advertising, marketing, when Mercury goes retrograde, we tend, and it rules the rational consciousness of the mind. We tend to forget things. Appointments get garbled a little bit. We miss the bus. That's my favorite one because when I'm in a not great mood, I always say my life is like running to catch the bus. I'm always running to catch the bus. And I have a lot of Mercury energy in my chart. But uh, when Mercury goes retrograde, the best thing you could do, I mean, everybody on the internet freaks out about it, but I actually look forward to it. I'm sure like the two of you, I always have this to-do list that's so huge. I got to do this, got to do this, got to do this. And I just say that Mercury retrograde is a perfect opportunity if you write your list a week, a couple days or a week before to go through your list and get the Klingons off of you so that at the end of the retrograde, you feel like you could fly free again. Well, it's just finishing. It's it's simple yeah. as if, you, if you've been thinking about getting some incense for the longest time, go get the incense. You've been thinking about having your hair done, go get your hair done. It doesn't stop you from doing those things. It just means, you know, they may change your flight detail, they, your your appointment you may have come a day late on. You know, you have to watch those things. Right. And you but can hear Mark people from the past, too, during Mercury Retro. Yeah, the blast from the past. That's so very, very... It always happens. Always happens. But I love, I love the Mercury Retrograde cycle. And it really depends. It's not the same for everybody. It really depends when it's hitting something in your chart, and that's a very right. personal thing, and well, you have to get your chart done. I think, I think a lot of the times, though, people think, oh, my God, I shouldn't do anything. Do not do this because it's going to be horrible. And there's right, some right. things that we have to have done. I think I just want our listeners to know, like, if you need to have a surgery or something like that, and it's during that time frame, don't freak out that it's going to be horrible just know that there may be some glitches with it just right. pick the like right said, day. delays pick the right day you can have surgery during a mercury retrograde now if it's elective surgery i may look at it differently i might right. say well do i really have to do it then but mm. but it's it's more specific than that mercury rules communication too so when it's going backwards it means your communication is deepening and maybe you know you're going within and maybe having that great talk with the divine. The first two days Mercury goes before it goes retrograde and the last two days before it goes direct is called the stationary period. And that's the best time to talk to the divine because yeah. you're not sitting there telling the divine, well, I did this and I meditated. You're listening for a change. It's a great, great time. Yeah. Don, can you touch briefly on Saturn because it came into Pisces and I don't know why. It's like when it, when it came into my sign the last time, it just seemed like everything went haywire, and now it's in Pisces again. I'm, what is? Can you touch on that? Absolutely. I just noticed Saturn sitting on your Venus right now, uh, which definitely <laughs> could mean you could well it could mean that you dark cloud. <laughs> no, no, Saturn. No. Hang on one second, one quick second. <laughs> no, when Saturn sits on Venus, you watch your budget a little bit more. Maybe you've been conscious about paying attention to getting rid of some old clothes and things that you don't yeah. need. 
old makeup, you know, even past the jewelry on that you're not wearing anymore because those no. are all. Oh, don't you wear yeah, the jewelry? The jewelry. I'm I a winger now. <laughs> I like that too. I totally get it. I love my jewelry. <laughs> Touch my jewelry. No. <laughs> But You're sometimes funny. you have younger styles that you don't like anymore. And I just recently yeah. gave away some things, so I was glad to do that. Saturn and Pisces, the best way I could describe Saturn. Saturn is about boundaries, and it's about constructiveness. It's okay. about building. It's formation. It's about building your life. And it has a karmic influence to it, but okay. so does your life. This isn't the first merry-go-round. You've had other lifetimes. So anyways, when you look at Saturn and Pisces, Saturn's about form, and Pisces is naturally ruled by Neptune in the modern astrology, which is the formless, which is gases, which is fog. So the best way I could describe uh, Saturn and Pisces, because Saturn's about building, is I saw a meme on, on the internet that had this guy trying to put nails into a shoreline as if it was going to stop the water from coming in. It stopped Pisces from coming in. Mm -hmm. Pisces always finds a way. So if you saw Pisces, if you saw Neptune at the bottom of your chart in a water sign, and I've done this for people all the time, or Pluto, which could be, you know, damages you don't see, it can be no. water, you know, hidden water issues in the house or floods or things like that. No, no, no. I remember this one guy, he bought a new house. He didn't consult as when to sign the contract. And I just said to him in his yearly reading, I said, you know, it looks like you're going to have some water damage in the house. And he's like, no, 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 it's a new house, blah, blah, blah. But he did. They had to rip out the walls. Oh, wow. Well. But you can see those things for the most part. You know, there's still, we don't know everything, of course. Yeah, you don't want to know everything because we never get any sleep. <laughs> but oh, but it's, it's good to be helpful with your profession, no matter what it is. I wanted to just finish with this thought. I'm so sorry. No, no, no. You don't know, the, be you, sorry. You know, people will run up to you and say, well, the Bible says don't believe in this. The Bible says don't believe in that. Okay, we're getting past that, thank the goddess. But anyways, <laughs> if my mother, father, the... You know, the organizing forces, the subtle forces of our universe, put those stars and planets in the sky as a roadmap for us. I mean, why would we give God the finger and say, you know, or or pretend like, how did this happen? Why me? Or anything like that. We have a roadmap. That's what astrology is. Well, how, astrology could they, how could they poo-poo that? Because look at the, God, the um, three wise men. They looked at the star and were guided. I know. So that's right there. It's so, whose yeah. story you want to follow. It yeah. Truly. yeah, yeah. Churches were into the zodiac long, long. But people oh, are yeah. Into... Absolutely. No, definitely. Sure. Definitely. So, Joanne, anything <laughs> um, else do you want us to um, finish My with? God, we with need another the... 10 hours early. And it's just like, I know. You, you know, know what, Dawn, and I'm going to put this out to you. Would yeah. you, as we grow, I mean, we're planning to continue to grow this because we're still uh -huh. in our infancy, we're seeding and everything. Would you be our astrologer on here? I mean, you're, you're just come back I would periodically love, for things. I, I would love to. It's an honor. But yes, I because, love sharing astrology and also just demystifying it for people. Yeah, right? because we so want to get... That. We want to get our audience involved and do like live chat or something like that. Yeah, and we can even do, you know, even some live calls where if I know ahead of time what their birthdays are, I can just whip up their chart real quick. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, yeah, that's always fun to do that. I love and it. People are always amazed, like, how did you know this kind of thing? No, I don't have such such live you're but, such a wealth of information. And then, of course, we didn't even touch on your crystals. I mean, that's a, and I'm, a, I'm I know, a that's a whole show. I'm a okay. crystal person. That's five I shows, like, right? I'm just going to show one crystal. Can you see it there or no? Is that Labrador? Oh, or what is that? No, this is a boulder opal. That piece is, oh. is polished. So I guess it's kind of hard to see. Let me see if I can. It looks like a Labrador right from work, but it's a not. A little bit, yeah. Oh, this, it, oh my this God. This is the rock. It's, it's called gorgeous. a yellow. It looks like my, moonstone. I mean, it's like illuminated. Yeah. Yeah, an opal. I could That's see the opal name. in there. But what I like to say about bo about boulder opals, which means this one comes from Australia, is opals are silicates of pi hydrous particles in a colloidal state, which means it's the only stone not set in stone. It's always in a place of movement. And so when you are attracted to boulder opals, 
or if a boulder opal comes up in your reading, because I put a whole card deck together called the Jewels of the Lotus based on my crystals. It's a time to A, drink more water and increase your mobility, but also not to be so set in stone, to realize that the universe is always changing. Moving, moving. It's always moving and circumstances moves, change. Just put your yeah. highest intentions out to the divine and allow Lab. the divine to bring it back to you in a way that helps guide your life. That's yeah. amazing. My husband loves, well, my husband loves rocks. <laughs> he's like, he's I rock see back there, by the way, our lady. Yeah, don't think yeah, I didn't yeah, find yeah. what was going on here. You would not believe the rocks he has transported from one town to another. I mean, he's moved. That's rock. me. That's me. What sign is your husband? He's a Gemini. And his name is Fred. I call him Fred from the quarry. You know, like Fred, Fred Flintstone. Fred Flintstone. <laughs> Fred Flintstone. <laughs> he brought the rock from their former house. I want to share this. I actually... <laughs> My my husband be in astrology, by the way. Okay. So I just wanted my astrologer had told me I yeah. was going to the man I was going to marry two weeks before my birthday, and someone gave him my business card, and he came in for a treatment back in the eighties. Uh, and he wouldn't leave my office, and my next client was a friend who owned a med who owned a uh, organic juice bar thing, and she and I said, Gail, this guy won't leave my office. She goes, I know that's the guy you're going to marry. Oh. No. oh my god and it was august 14th and my birthday's august 30th it was oh exactly. my god my son's birthday is august 30th wow oh, oh. he must be wonderful well, that's awesome he, he he is i call him he's an innocent i cried when he was when i was holding him and it wasn't postpartum there was something i knew about him that was so yeah like he's, so had, he's had challenges but um he's a beautiful soul well, the August 30th can have challenges. What year is he born? Just out of curiosity. How um, old is he? 72. So he's born in 72. So how old does that make him? Uh, 50, wait a 42? No, no, 50. 50. He's going to be Wait a minute. He's going to be 52. I can't remember. My kids are getting too old. He'll be 52 because we're in 24, but I don't get the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Young. you, you had some fun. Young. Yeah, I was only 10. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <to bring up. laughs> <laughs> and so, Joanne, you have such a beautiful son. I don't. Do you have a? You have a couple others, don't you? I've got Bob and Chris. Bob is their very spiritual guru. It's one of Bob. You know, we call them Buddha, Bob, Bob or Jane, Jane and Sophie. I know. I, I just yeah, right now he's family. In a, but um, and then Christopher is the architect. Nice, brilliant kids. I just I love my baby. Yeah, I very the same way. I have two. Love my babies. Yeah, and I have my daughter also, and she's a Taurus. So we're we're kind of. <laughs> Where, where's your venus arlene do you oh, know I, i'm not sure do you know joanne you had looked at my thing do you I'm know sorry, what was the question my venus where's your venus i don't know how to... looked up I'll, your I'll look it up later hopefully it didn't get lost <laughs> i've got lost in the second drawer over there <laughs> no but i mean i have my venus in a water sign joanne has her venus in a water sign i'm going to see where yours is but, you know, in a water sign, it does, Venus is, is about love. And in a water sign, it makes us a little more um, intuitive and compassionate and yeah, wanting to yeah. your people. Right. I have my Venus in the 11th house, which is the house of community. And I always joke about Venus rules the breast. My joke was always, I just need to grow a whole bunch more so I can feed the community. Oh, my God. Take some well, of ours. Mine could. That's a nice story. <laughs> oh, my God. You guys are funny. That's so, <laughs> so but anyway, we well, love to I love to have meeting you. Thank you and coming out. So much fun. Oh wow. Yeah, that was, that was a heart. rose quartz. I was gonna say all you need is love. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, I have my heart. You got yours. And we um, need um, well, I, you have a whole bunch back there. Oh it I looks have... like you live in a rock shop. I have rocks all over. He's got the rocks. Yeah, there's you a rose quartz heart back there my husband got me. It's big. Sweet. It's a big uh, you know, the rock thing was a funny thing. It was like I did that for so many years, you know, where I'd go travel and do crystal healing energy work and certify people. I did all that for years. And I have to say, running through airports with a whole bunch of rocks is really heavy business. And I remember <laughs> a couple of times guys would help me put my suitcase up and they said, what do you got, rocks in here? And I go, uh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. Uh, Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you so much, Don. Yeah, there any other so, um, okay, Joanne. Just we'll be, I just wanted to thank you because I know how busy you are. And it's like, 
And, and I still need a reading, too, so we'll talk afterwards. We'll talk about that. It was perfect. Your timing was perfect, actually. My business started to slow a little bit, and I love oh, these I'm... moments. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. And we definitely, we, we want to collaborate with you for the for the future. Yeah. Um, this was It'll be very fun. exciting and wonderful, and people are going to love it. And to all of our viewers, thank you for spending time with us. Thank you for watching, listening. Yeah. And, you know, move from your head down into your heart. It's all about love. And remember right. to be in, in balance and be the beautiful beacons of light that you are. It's all about you. Send that light out and connect with everybody out there because we need it desperately. Right. And, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. And yeah, it's... And check us on the other platforms, right, Joanne? What are we're we on Facebook, Facebook now. We're, gonna be out. we're on all the social media. Instagram stuff. and... Of course, all the podcast platforms, Apple, uh, Spotify, and all of that. But yes, yeah, subscribe, leave comments. And we're just going to, you know, we need to continue to grow and grow. And we'll have more fun things coming up. And we'll yeah. definitely have Dawn back. So Thank you. Things. This was We fun. always have Thank fun. You, so we, we always have fun. Bless you Bye. all. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste.